I think a lot of people are in very toxic, yeah. bad relationships yeah, yeah. And, and they're in it for whatever reason, they're comfortable. It's hard to break up with somebody. You don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. Mm. I mean, I've been in relationships before where, you know, I, I, you know, I knew that it was a wrong relationship. I knew I wasn't going to end up with this person, yeah. but I stayed. Why did I stay? Mm. That's the question I think you've got to ask yourself. If you're a man and you, you know, mm. like, you know, <laughs> if this person is somebody that you're going to kick it with long term yeah. and you know, if it's somebody that that is not. Yeah. Yo, what's good, everybody? It's Hafiz, and welcome to another episode. Guys, we are back in Atlanta, Georgia, and I am beyond excited about this guest to come on the podcast, a brand new roommate. Man, this is somebody I've been following for so many years. And you know what, guys? I'm telling you, I'm going to be honest with you. I meet a lot of people who are really amazing personalities online, but when you see them in person, when you meet them in person, that same energy is not there. But this guest right here, this guest, I am telling you, the hospitality, the kindness, all the amazing things in the human being, he displayed it. And not just that, he came bearing gifts. His company, <laughs> Enemy Eyewear, Lord Jesus, what an amazing human being. He gave me these glasses, and I'm telling you right now, fellas, look at this real quick, guys. Look at these bad boys right here. Man, boy, I can see myself wearing this on South Beach. I can see myself wearing this to the Met Gala. This is some amazing quality eyewear. I'm, I, can't, I, can't, I can't even wear it throughout the whole episode because some women may be watching, and it'll be too distracting from them to not be able to focus and enjoy our amazing guest. So I got to go ahead and take it off. Shout out Enemy Eyewear. Amazing, amazing glass. I'm going to link it to below in the description, guys. But without further ado, please let me welcome, welcome you guys to the show. The OG, the grandmaster himself, the one and only Aaron Marino. Welcome <laughs> to the show, Aaron. I, was that an intro? I feel like I need to come out. It's like you just hyped me up so much. That was amazing. I'm probably all red. I was smiling, man. Thank you so much for having man, me. No, man. It is an absolute pleasure. You've been killing it. And when you actually reached out, I was like, I'm like, I get to be on the room. I'm like, this is awesome. Because I've seen all my boys, you know, David and Alex and yeah. Jose yeah. and everybody. Everybody. And I was like, man, you, you, you've been killing it. And so thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And, and I, I really appreciate it, brother. Nah, man, it's, it's exciting, man, because I think the biggest thing for me is I love men who bring other men value. And you've been doing it for so many years. And you're one of the staples. You're one of the, the, the leader. You're the headship to the movement. And so, man, I just want to tell you, man, it's an absolute honor to be in your presence. And I really appreciate everything you've done for man, men I, and for society. I appreciate that very much. It's been it's been incredible. Um. You know, if you would have told me, you know, 12 years ago, what I'd be doing for a living and how much, you know, fulfillment and joy and, and happiness I would derive for, you know, from, from making videos, you know, I wouldn't have believed you. Actually, 12 years ago, I would have punched you in the face because that's not what I wanted to do <laughs> yeah, with yeah, my, yeah. with my life. But yeah, it's been, it's been an amazing ride. And, um, you know, just it, what really kind of struck me and, um, kind of rocked my world. It was years ago when I realized sort of the, the ability and the impact that you can have on this platform and that people are actually listening to me and what I had to say. And that was the point at which I kind of, it, it forced me to be a better person mm. and a better man because I didn't want to say one thing and act a different way when mm. I wasn't on camera. Wow. And so, so YouTube, not only have I been able to help you know, sort of, I think, you know, make a difference in a few guys' lives, but it made the biggest difference in mine. Yeah. And, um, and it's made me be a better person. And nah, so that's something it. that's, uh, you know, sort of a, a neat byproduct of, of doing what we do. Yeah, man, that's awesome. I feel the same exact way. So let's go ahead and go backwards because I feel like a lot of people may or may not be familiar with your story, why you got into the space. So if we're going back into the time machine and telling the the, the Alpha M Air Marino journey, <laughs> what year do we start at to really see the full picture? The, probably when I was um, 12 years old. <laughs> okay, so I, I, you want to go back? Let's go okay, back. Time let's, machine, let's go. Right? So, so really, I I think it all started because um, 
I come from an abuse. I had a, a few abusive stepfathers, mm. and um, and so you know, I ra was raised by a, a mother. Um, you know, I still have a relationship with my father, but she got married a few times, and uh, the two guys were not amazing. Mm. And so, what happened at around you know twelve years old, I sort of regressed into my shell, and I stopped being able to like speak my mind. I stopped being able to stand up for myself. And my self-esteem at that point was really low. Well, mm. something amazing happened. 12 years old, my mom asked me, she's like, what do you want for a Christmas present? And I said, I want a gym membership. Mm. You know, I'd seen the movie Rocky Four, right? <laughs> With the Russian, yeah, you remember yeah. that, right? Bravo, I was like, I'm like, I'm like, dude, I'm like, if a body can look like that, that's what I want, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so yeah. I was in the, in the basement listening to Vanilla Ice <laughs> with my sand weights. I'm like, I need to take it next level. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, so she gave me a fitness membership and that's when everything in my life changed because for the first time in my life, I felt great about myself. Mm. I loved everything about it. And from the age of 12, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with my life. And that was own a fitness center because I'm like, if I can feel this good here, I wanna be here all the time. Mm. And so from the age of 12, until I was able to actually open a, a personal training fitness center, um, that's my only dream, my only goal, my only anything. Mm. And so, um, ended up moving to Atlanta after graduating college. I got a degree in business management and uh, met a guy. I started working at a Bally's Health Club, met a mm -hmm. guy, and he's like, hey, you want to open a nutrition store? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, sounds good. It was it was a business. It yeah. wasn't necessarily a, a, a gym, but I, it was one step closer. And so ended up doing that with him for a few years. And um, it was not exactly the right direction for me because he... Um, it was it, long story short, he was selling things that were not exactly kosher <laughs> um, out of the back. And I knew oh. one thing that, uh, that I would, I would be popular in prison, but I would not thrive <laughs> in prison, right? I would be, I would be very popular, but it, not in a good way. And so, so I, I met a woman and, uh, while I was at the nutrition store who, um, who I helped lose a hundred pounds. Oh, wow. And so she came to me one day and she said, Hey, I want to do what you did for me for other with other people. Would you be interested in opening a personal training studio? I'm mm. like, my God, this is it. This is the only thing I've ever wanted. Yes. And so we did. We signed the lease to that, that fitness center on September 11th, as in like the September 11th, wow. when the planes were crashing into the World That's Trade Center. Crazy. That should have been an omen <laughs> as to how my business is going to <laughs> unfold. Because, you know, a few, like four or five years later, um, we ended up having to, we, Long, it, it's a long story. I will I'll save you the gory mm. details. Yeah. But uh, we tried expanding. We had to take you know loans and and investment from some people. Some problems started arising, and um, at that point, I was about half a million dollars in debt. I was Jeez. driving a beer cart at an at a country club mm. on weekends just to put gas in my car and give my then girlfriend, my now wife, a little bit of money for food and rent and things of that nature. And, um, and we ended up having to close it down and mm. shut it down. And that was, I would say the lowest point in my life was when we had to end up shutting down the fitness center. And it wasn't that I was broke. It wasn't that I was driving a beer cart. The problem with me and the reason why it was so hard is that for my entire life, that was the only goal I ever had. Mm. And so when that's taken away from you, I didn't know what was next. Mm. And so that, that, that lack of direction, that lack of like, Hey, where am I going next? Um, that was the hardest point for me. And mm -hmm. so um, my wife ended up giving me a video camera back in 2007. Well, real quick. I'm sorry. Yeah. Aaron, how old were you at this time? Shit. I was in my 30s. Okay, cool. Yeah, right. I'm 44 years oh, old okay, now. Awesome. And so I've been doing this YouTube since 2008. 2006 okay. was when I filed bankruptcy. Okay. And so um, I had to file bankruptcy. I was broke, but I was starting over. Mm. And so I was like, all right, what can I do that uh, that – that doesn't require a lot of money. Mm. And one of the other cool things that happened when I had my fitness center is that I met a guy who was a meteorologist at the Weather Channel. Cool. And he was like, hey, he's like, I don't know what to wear on a date. I always love style. I love clothing. I love grooming. Mm. I, I started cutting my own hair when I was, you know, like six years old. Oh, wow. And so I was always into that. And so I, he was like, hey, I have a date. I don't know what to wear. Mm. And I said, well, I'll tell you what. I'm like, why don't I come over to your place? We'll see what you have, see what you need. We'll go shopping. And by the way, your nose hairs are crazy. Mm -hmm. Let's go get a haircut. And I didn't realize, but I was setting up sort of a foundation for a career. I didn't know what it was at the time. This was back like before actually, like Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and I didn't even know what it was, uh, but I enjoyed it. And when he went back to work, 
um, one of his female coworkers was like, hey, you look great. What happened? And he's like, yeah, I got this guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. she's like, will he take my husband shopping? Mm. And that's when it kind of clicked in my head. Maybe there's a market for just a regular guy who happens to know more about shoes and, and, and clothing than he does does football. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I decided to try uh, creating a, an image consulting firm. And, and I did. And, and then my wife gave me a video camera. And I thought maybe there's more opportunity out there for me just to give more advice to people. I I had been on YouTube like three times before I actually uploaded a video my oh, first wow. time. So, you know, I didn't know anything about technology. I didn't know anything about YouTube, but I just knew that, Hey, if, if maybe there's an audience out there, I'll, I'll start talking and, and I had no idea what I was in store for. Mm. Not even the first clue. Man. That's my story. Yeah. No, nah, that's awesome. Man. <laughs> Did that take too long? We done? No, that was great. <laughs> that was great. Now I love it because man, I think to me, um, especially with your story, a lot of guys think like twenties is everything. And a lot of guys feel like, okay, like if I have not succeeded by my twenties, I'm an absolute failure. And what the beauty about your story was that at your thirties is when you filed bankruptcy and you hit rock bottom, but you were still able to overcome that and be extremely successful to the man that you are today. So I think that that story was important, especially that pivotal detail for all the guys who might be in their thirties and in the same similar situation that you were at to realize that there is still hope. No, absolutely. And that's one of the things, you know, the age is one of those things. And in today's world, you know, you, you just need to keep going. You mm. need to, you need to figure it out. You know, you need to just, just keep looking forward. And, and yeah, I mean, age is one of those things where as long as you're healthy, as long as you take care of yourself, you know, anything is possible at any age, honestly. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So like I said, man, you're one of the OGs in the space, man. You've been doing it for so many years. You probably talk to so many guys, heard so many stories, and you probably just have a wealth of wisdom that obviously your channel provides and you have volumes inside of your head. So from your personal experience, what have you noticed to be the three biggest struggles that young men deal with in their everyday lives from your personal experience? Ooh. Um, you know, I think, I think confidence is, is obviously, mm -hmm. you know, something that, that is super, super challenging these days. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I think a lot of men don't know sort of where they fit and where to go. You know, I am so thankful that I didn't grow up with social media mm -hmm. because I think social media adds a whole nother level of complexity and, um, just, just intensity to, you know, to your, your life. And the fact that we get to be voyeurs in all of these other people's lives that are not reality, but mm -hmm. you're seeing what you think is reality. And you think that because I don't have this, I don't drive that. I'm not wearing that watch. I don't have all the stuff that we, we see now. Mm -hmm. It makes us feel bad about ourselves. Combine that with the fact that I think as, as, as men, we don't really know where we're allowed to be men, where mm. we can go, because I think we're getting a lot of mixed messages. And, um, and so I think it's just about, you know, the, the number one thing that we struggle with probably is, is definitely going to be confidence. Mm. Um, just not feeling as good about ourselves as we possibly could. And that's the reason why I started my channel is mm -hmm. just to help guys feel better about themselves. Mm. Um, Next thing, ah, oh, geez, I don't know. What about you? What do you think? Man, no, I want to stay on the confidence one before we get to the next one because I feel like you really hit the nail on the head because, like, I love your videos because I think you do so much of a great job of helping men build up that confidence. And that's something I hear happen over and over and over again. So many guys are like, man, I just don't feel good about myself. And so I guess to me, I'm, I want to stay there because I'm like, okay, if there was a 20 year old kid right now who has absolutely no confidence and we brought him to, you know, alpha MA Mr. consultant to be able to help build up the confidence. What, what steps do we, take to help build up this young man number one confidence. is getting in the gym and start taking care of your body okay. i am a firm believer that that is the single biggest thing that happened to me when i started lifting weights and taking care of my physique and challenging it was was i started to feel better about myself mm. because you're you're purposely putting yourself in uncomfortable positions and situations and then you see your body start to change it feels good it feels amazing you go back for more mm. and the gym working out taking care of myself was was the number one thing that i would recommend anybody do mm. that is thinking about you know just just taking better care of themselves, number one, but mm. there's, there's so many other 
benefits from exercise and physical fitness that doesn't meet the eye that you don't see on the outside. Mm. And so I would say get into the gym. The other thing is, is, is fail. Mm. Honestly, I think that, that we have been conditioned to be so scared of that whole like failure, like, mm. because it's, it's got a really negative connotation. Once you fail, right? The best thing that ever happened to me was I failed huge mm. and I failed like really, mm. really bad. Yeah, yeah. And, um, because I realized that, okay, if you're that low, once you fail, you know, okay, you know, so, so you didn't die, you know, you're okay. Mm -hmm. You're going to, you know, get up and, and you're going to keep going. And so what happened was once you start getting a few little successes under your belt, you realize, and a few failures, because you've got to fail, it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs to go through that mm -hmm. in order to really build character and strength of, 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 you know, of, of character, honestly. And, um, you know, it, it, means a, a great deal to me the fact that you know if you can fail if you can get it out of the way get over it and realize that you didn't didn't croak and yeah. you're okay and move forward that's that's a huge you know way to help you build confidences as, as well and then little successes yeah. having little successes along the way also is going to help you know build that confidence i love it and what do you think why do you think so many men are afraid to fail because it's scary. Yeah. <laughs> it's scary, right? Yeah. Because yeah. we don't want to we don't want to apply ourselves to something that we aren't going to be good at. We don't want to have to tell our friends that we failed. We don't want to have to actually, you know, acknowledge, okay, I wasn't amazing at that or that didn't work out. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think it's just human nature. We want to be successful. We want to succeed at things. Mm -hmm. And when that doesn't happen or the fear of the unknown is is magnified or greater than your 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 desire or hunger for success you know i think it can it can absolutely stifle your growth it can also prevent you from moving forward mm. and and actually trying yeah and it's just i mean it's scary failing sucks yeah period but yeah. get it off the table because it's gonna happen it's yeah. gonna happen to you it's gonna happen to me it's gonna happen to me probably tomorrow <laughs> and it's gonna happen to you watching this <laughs> every single one of you is gonna fail or at least you should yeah because honestly that is what builds the character and yeah. and Failing is going to help you sort of, you know, harden, harden your sword and, and move forward to a, to a better direction and, and bigger success. No, I agree with you 100% because I think like you made a great point about how the pressures of social media and everyone seeing everybody else's highlight tape. We think that, OK, there's no as a, real men don't lose, you know, real men are always winning. They, they never have any mistakes and nothing bad ever happens. And what I tell people all the time is, well, the difference between losing and being a loser. Every man loses, because that's a part of life, but being a loser is being knocked down and staying down. And I love that you brought up that Rocky reference at the beginning, because I love Rocky for as one of the best ones. And that is the best thing about Rocky. Rocky has been knocked down so many times. Even before he fought Apollo, he lost so many times. But the thing about Rocky is that he, he, he gets knocked down, but he never stays down. And like you said, you were 30 years old. You got knocked down. When I was 20 years old, I had to move back with my parents. I got knocked down. But the difference is that there's some men who stay down and some men that get, get back up. So in moments when you get knocked down, in moments when you experience failure, what helps you get back up and keep going? Honestly, at this point in my life, the the thing that I I fear the most, it's not necessarily failure. You know, mm. it sucks, it hurts, and you'll get over it. Yeah. What I fear is regret, and mm. so the thing that that I that gets me back up is that I I just don't want to regret that I didn't try, I didn't do something I wanted to do mm -hmm. for that that fear that 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 fear of failure. And so for me, I don't want to be 95 years old on my deathbed and think about all the things I wish I would have done. I want to throw it out on the table and you know, I'm going to try a lot of things. A lot of things are going to not work, but hopefully some of the things that I do try are going to work and and that's going to ultimately be my legacy and mm -hmm. not this this, you know, staying down and staying, you know, beaten up just you know what take it yeah get over it and and move forward the other thing i i just want to real quick point out is um i think one of the other issues that we're kind of that we that that prevents men from really moving forward is not feeling okay being vulnerable mm. and and um and emotional and realizing that emotions are part of it and not dealing with some of the issues that they might be facing mm. i think um you know one of the other 
reasons why and things that has helped me in terms of my confidence was actually going to therapy. Mm. Um, I, I was harboring a lot of resentment and anger towards my mother for dragging, you know, me through, you know, a lot of these bad situations. And literally at the age of like 25, I was, I, I, I had the inability to stand up for myself and actually speak my mind mm. and confrontation scared the shit out of me. Mm. Like it would, like I would get nervous. I would feel like I was going to pass out it just, like random, like, com you know, confrontations that you're going to have just with, with random people throughout life. And so I realized it was so unhealthy. I couldn't stand up for myself that I decided I got to fix this mm. or else it's going to perpetuate through my entire life. And so I went to therapy, um, to deal with, you know, myself, my issues and realize that, you know what, sometimes we are collateral damage in other people's shit. It's not mm. that other people necessarily mean to take it out on us yeah. or do us wrong. We just happen to be co collateral damage. Mm. And um, it was an eye-opening sort of experience for me. And that was another point in my life that was very pivotal, pivotal in terms of me sort of getting over all the anger and hostility that I was carrying and hurt and pain that I was carrying around for my entire life from, you know, a little, you know, 12 year old kid or 10 year old kid. And, and that, was, uh, you know, saying no for the first time was mm. one of the hardest things I ever did, but it was so exhilarating. And then just having the ability to say no, stand up for yourself and, and just move forward is, is, is remarkable, honestly. No, that's great. Because one of the things that, um, especially in the men's improvement space, what I see is that there's a lot of emphasis on like becoming best physically, right? Getting in the gym, you know, style, that's important. Then there's a lot of emphasis on getting better financially, you know, whereas getting, getting your money, becoming financially stable. But that emotionality part that you just referenced to is so neglected. And that's something that so many men are dealing with on a consistent basis because so many guys are taught to just harbor it all in. You know, like you said, it's literally like you open their closet and all of a sudden it's, you know, floods of clothes <laughs> exactly. and drama and issue comes out. And, and I think there's a lot of guys feel like I'm less of a man for expressing my emotions. So for guys who need to get into therapy and for guys who do need to get help, but they think that it makes them less of a man to ask for help and to actually pursue these things, what would be a message you would give to that person? That that therapy and dealing with your issues is is a gift that you give yourself. Mm. Um, you know, and and they say that about forgiveness, right? Forgiveness is a gift that you give yourself. Um, you know, it it's really a a, a question of you know, I personally feel like strong men actually will seek help when they need it, you know, ask for help. And our our emotional and, and mental health has, has been something that I think has been greatly neglected. And I think it's probably going to get worse with social media and everything that we are bombarded with in terms of from the media. And so for me, I think that unless you get that that emotional aspect, I mean, nothing else matters. I mean, if you're a disaster emotionally, you're not going to be good for a partner. You're not going to be good for a woman, for your kids, for your for your career, for your job. Like you need to get get it under control and really deal with the issues that you've you've got harboring or you're carrying around with you. Yeah, no, that's good. I, I love that because I think that's something that guys don't realize how that affects other areas of your life. You know, and I think so many people they simply think, oh, I just got to work harder, work harder work harder but yo if you have not taken care of the emotional issues it's gonna plague your business as well you know we all had those business partners or employees who were dealing with so much emotional drama and they think that they were harboring it in but it was affecting their every single day work and that was causing the company you know to suffer and so I just think a lot of guys need to take that seriously. And I'm excited about your channel because, and excited about your message because I think more men need to hear that, you know? And like you said, therapy is something that is for you. It's part of that self-improvement journey. You know, it's part of that self-development journey that so many men who especially watch your channel need to take part in. Yeah. And, and the thing is about therapy, one of the other things, and I, you know, there are a lot of different resources out there now. You don't have to go and sit down in front of, you know, like Tony Soprano, <laughs> you know, go into the office yeah, and yeah. sit down. You're like you, there, there are resources out there. Yeah. But one of the cool things about it is that, and why I'm such an advocate is that, 
you know, when you're dealing with stuff, you know, I don't want to talk to my wife about stuff that I'm dealing with my mom mm -hmm. or, you know, it's a, it's an unbiased third party perspective that mm -hmm. you don't need to sit next to at Christmas dinner yeah. that really doesn't have any skin in the game yeah. and can give you honest feedback. And honestly, that's the, that's the part of it that sometimes is, is the hardest to hear, but it's what we need to hear is that, is that honest feedback that, you know what, we, we need that, that feedback loop to, uh, to, to, to come full circle. And sometimes you need to hear those hard messages and those hard uh, conversations or have them anyway. 100%. And guys, as you know, we partner with BetterHelp Counseling, guys, to be able to provide you guys licensed professional counseling online. So if you're not comfortable of going into an office, if you're not comfortable, you know, with saying, seeing somebody face to face, you can use, you know, BetterHelp. You can set up, you know, if, if it's text, if it's FaceTimes, if it's just a phone call, you know, betterhelp.com slash roommates. The link is in the description below so take advantage of that especially for those who are harboring a lot of pain was this a better help <laughs> hey I, I promote better help too i love better help yeah, no, better yeah, help yeah. is incredible yeah, yeah, yeah. and and let me just say this you know while while, while you're on it better help is an incredible resource yeah. that is out there and they've got financial aid available yeah. it's super affordable you get unlimited counseling yeah. um and it's 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 quick and so yeah. and the one other thing i'll just mention with therapy even if it's better help or somebody in person of course. Sometimes you don't get it right on the first time. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like dating, right? Yeah, you got to yeah, find the right that's therapist important. that's going to be, you know, work for you and 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 help you the best. But yeah. but don't get discouraged yeah, if you yeah, get yeah. somebody that's not really your cup of tea at yeah, first. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But yeah, betterhelp.com. <laughs> <laughs> you know he's a professional. He's good <laughs> at what he does. Hit that link down in the description. <laughs> oh, man. So... So going back to, I think what we we're talking about before was the idea of different things that men struggle with. And the first thing that you brought up was confidence. And uh, as you were talking about regret, it led me to another point that is kind of the opposite of regret, but in a different way. And it's laziness, because I feel like what when you when you fear regret, it causes you to do so much. Therefore, it prevents you from being lazy because if you're lazy, you'll miss out on opportunities and then you'll regret it. And so I see so many men who may watch your content, who may watch my content, and they love it. And it's so inspirational, so motivational. Oh, Alf, uh, Aaron told me to get into the gym. Yeah, Aaron told me to do my hair. Yeah, Aaron told me this. But then when, they, when it's time to do it, they don't do it. Why do you think so many men are consuming amazing content creators such as yourself, but in, when it comes to actually applying it, they're not doing it? It's all about motivation. It cannot be, it's, it's in, intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got to be from within. You can watch your videos, my videos, anybody's videos and get inspired, but you know, and inspiration and motivation is is short lived mm -hmm. unless you are doing things to actually make it a part of you and and what you're about and and that that desire. Um, you know, you get bored, you get comfortable, you get you know just sort of you know I think I think lazy when you don't. And that's the other thing, when you don't see the results as quickly as you think you should mm -hmm. or that you will. That's deep. I think that that's another thing that people don't realize. You know, it's not quick. Nothing change isn't quick. It's mm. something that happens over time. Success, it happens over time. Mm. And so oftentimes you are, people are this close. If they would just keep going mm. a little bit further, a little bit longer, they would make it work, you know, and, and my, my secret to success, I'm not a smart guy. I'm kind of dumb, but my <laughs> ability to focus even when things aren't exciting, things aren't aren't fun. I can keep my head down and, and I can just keep working and, and I know that eventually it will hopefully pay off. Sometimes it won't and you gotta know when to kind of shoot the bleeding dog. But yeah, success is not a quick thing. There is no straight line. It's gonna be bumpy, it's gonna be long and it's gonna take longer typically than, than you think it will or yeah. that you hope anyway. No, I love that point because it also ties into funny, the whole social media thing. Cause when you're on social media and let's say you're a 23, 24 year old kid and you see all these people, you know, living this life and driving these cars and having these nice apartments and going on these vacations, you're like, man, I want it now. And so when you pop in, you know, an Aaron video and it's, and you see, okay, it's going to take you a year in the gym. You know, when you see them take you a year of maybe rebuilding your credit, your short-term mindset 
of, of wanting instant gratification is incongruent with the long-term process that leads to success. Man, you need to write a book. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a quote. A hundred percent. I agree. A hundred percent. Yeah. And so I think that's something that, you know, a lot of kids, especially who grew up today, deal with that. So what is what are some solutions that you feel that you've done in your own personal life to help you have more delayed gratification and not to want to expedite the process to success? Ooh, that's a that's a great question. Um, in terms of delayed gratification, you know, for me, it's all about the process. Mm. I just I enjoy the process. Um, I've wanted to be successful for my entire life. The thing about it is though that I didn't really know what success looked like and and my my view and version of success has changed over the years. It's never been to drive a nice car or have a nice watch. It's always been what I've come to realize is to help people and make a difference in people's lives. Mm, that's awesome. And so for me, you know, the fact that when when you don't do things for the financial gain necessarily and the financial reward, it's it sort of changes things, right? And so for me, all of, you know, I've been financially, you know, successful, but the process that it's it's taken me and, and the journey that it's taken me in terms of the amount of people and lives that I've touched along with my my own, I mean, it's something where I just, it's it's so intoxicating mm. that it's very, for me, it's, it's very motivating just to keep to keep going, keep working, and and not lose sight of the the big picture. Yeah, no, that's good because I think what you made reference to is that purpose. You know, because I think when you have that purpose, you love it. So you're constantly chasing that instead of just a specific end destination. Yeah, it's like when you like like that's the, that's the other thing. Like if you're chasing like material possessions, if you're like, hey, I I need a car, I need this, and you buy stuff, like okay, great. You get a momentary like hit of dopamine. Mm -hmm. It feels great, and mm -hmm. like yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Three days later, you're like, all right, what next? Yeah, you know. But yeah. when it's when it's a deeper purpose, when you find your your calling or something that really you know just gets you going and and gets you up in the morning, you know, it changes things. Mm -hmm. And it it is it is something that I I wish everybody finds honestly mm -hmm. because when you do, it's it's gonna change your life. No, that's that's awesome, and so. I think that's so important. I think every single man needs to go on that journey to discover his purpose, because like you said, it, it will really motivate you or really encourage you and it will help you, especially when times are difficult. Remind you, it's kind of like your North Star, right? That will constantly guide you moving you forward. And similar to your purpose is that, you know, I have a very similar purpose to help men. And, and that's why I just think it's just like when times get tough, when times get challenging, we're always remembering, okay, there's another guy out there that we can help another guy whose message that needs to be heard. And going back to your channel, it's called Alpha M. And a lot of guys love your content about having an alpha mindset or being an alpha. So in, in your own words, what would you, what would you define as alpha or even that alpha mindset that you're trying to preach? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's one of the interesting things. And, and I get a lot of crap for that <laughs> because I'm a little dude, right? I'm five foot six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I got kind of a high voice. <laughs> I am not, I, I wear earrings. <laughs> I am not what you would classically consider like an alpha male. Mm. And so the reason why I, my channel even has that name is because my image consulting firm, when I was thinking about what's a name that, that really sort of resonates with men and that says men without being too like alpha male, I was like, oh, alpha M, that's kind of a stylized yeah, version, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I, I, I called my channel that. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> and so, so, but what I've come to realize, I think that the, you know, when you think of somebody who is like an alpha male, Historically, you think of somebody who's, you know, six foot two, 250 pounds of twisted steel and sex appeal. He yeah. walks in the room and like, he's the man. Yeah, yeah. And I really feel like in today's world, you need a different mindset, a different skill set in order to be, you know, quote unquote alpha. You need to be a man of integrity. You need mm. to have drive. You've got to have motivation. You need to bring value to the world. Mm. And you don't need to, I mean, and it's all about having a, a not having a victim mindset. And I think that that's one of the things that holds a lot of men back is mm. that they've got this victim mindset. Yes. Like it's happened to me because I'm this, because I'm poor, because mm. I'm short, mm. because I'm black, because I'm, you know, Asian, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And when you have that mindset, you're doomed. You yeah. are fucking doomed. Part of my language. You're good. And it's, it's one of those things where, you know, is once you realize how incredibly powerful you are and, and, 
how you can make a difference in not only other people's lives, but your own life. You know, anything is possible. I, mm. you know, you look at all these other people, you know, like, like, mm. you know, Alex and Jose, myself, Antonio Centeno, some of these people that I have come in, in our, like my like men's lifestyle space. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at all these people, the chips were stacked against every single one of us yeah, that's in terms real. of, you know, you, you grow up poor. I think honestly, growing up poor is an advantage mm. if you can get out of that victim mindset, yeah, that's real. because you're going to go one of two ways. Yeah, you're yeah, either yeah. going to break and work your ass off yeah. to be like, you know what, just because I'm starting here doesn't mean I'm going to end up here or you're going to have that victim mindset. I can't, um, you know, poor me. I can't succeed because of this mm. and an alpha male knows that he can succeed despite his current situation. Wow, that's awesome. No, that that is amazing. And and it's so funny because when you when you meet a lot of successful men, you eventually start seeing patterns. And one of the most consistent patterns is one how much do we all, we all hate victim the victim mindset and we see that successful men are going to you like they have a mindset where they will succeed regardless of the obstacle. And that's something in which I think, like you said, everybody has an obstacle, right? Are some obstacles bigger than others? Yeah, but everyone has an obstacle. And like you said, the men, the alpha mindset is no matter what you put before me, I'm going to overcome it. Shout out to Rocky Balboa, right? Shout out you know, to Rocky Balboa. If I'm 60 years old <laughs> and this old 30-year-old guy wants to fight me in his prime, I'm going to overcome it. And so... I, I I love that you said that because I think a lot of guys need to hear that, man. Yeah, man. You just it it's you you've just gotta understand, you know, if you if you think that you can't, you won't. I mm. mean, that that's just the the bottom line. Yeah. And um, you know, surround yourself also. Here's the other thing. You know, one of the things that changed my life was was surrounding myself with better people mm. and you know, getting the toxic people out of my life, you yeah. know, because we all have those those voices right in the back of our head that all of the all of the all of the people in our lives that told us we can't, we shouldn't, we won't, and and it's their own shit, not yeah, ours. Yeah, exactly. But getting the toxic people out of your life and surrounding yourself with people that inspire you and that aren't losers. You know, mm. I think that that one of the unfortunate realities is that. A lot of men hang out with people that are, you know, that are their friends that that have been there for a while, but they're not bringing value and they're Mm. not inspiring them to be better. Mm. And, you know, and that was one of the things that really changed my life. And and everything in my life started to get better in terms of scale when I surrounded myself with people that were going and wanting to to accomplish great things. Mm. And um, and so, you know finding your tribe and, and really sort of immersing yourself and, and finding people that, that have the same mindset, have the same sort of goals. They don't have to want to do the exact same thing, mm. but they have, you know, a, a purpose. They've got drive. They've got, you know, they do not have that victim mindset that I think is critical. No, one of the, one of the uh, quotes that I, I've really come to um, embody was the quote that said, you are the sum of the, the, the closest five people you, you associate with. And to me, I think the the best part about, you know, traveling and doing the podcast and meeting amazing messages yourself is that every time I'm interacting with you guys, it makes me want to go up a notch, you know, looking at your amazing facility and your and your amazing work and your amazing channel and you being an amazing person. Now that makes me want to get better. And so I think men need to find that. Right. Because like you said, if all the people around you are negative, complaining, whining, cynical, wanting to you know, do illegal activities like you, no matter how strong you are, you know, Atlas can only hold one earth. You know what yeah. I mean? So like if you're holding all these anchors and liabilities into your life, I think that's what hinders so many men. And not just that, I, when it comes to the liabilities and the unhealthy people, when it comes to platonic relationships, I think what's also true is romantically i think unfortunately a lot of men associate with a lot of unhealthy you know female partners which are individuals who pull them down and i know for you you've shared that you're married i can only imagine how much of a benefit and a blessing your wife has been so for the guys who may not be aware of women who are a blessing and only are used to women who may be a burden what are some of the blessings that you found in your your relationship and how your wife has made you better as a person yeah well she's made me better as a person a lot of different ways um (laughs) you know it's funny i would never be if i okay so let me let me say this i would not be where i am today in terms of my entrepreneurial journey my professional and personal development if i had been single Mm. 
And the reason for that is that my wife has been my rock. She has been there for me, you know, when I was, you know, driving that beer cart, filing bankruptcy, you know, she never, you know, made me feel bad about myself because I wasn't successful. That was all, you know, me internalizing everything. But if I had been chasing, you know, women around and, mm. and, and just put, because so much mental bandwidth goes, if you're single, so much mental bandwidth goes towards trying to meet women, talk to women, go out, party, do this. I didn't have to worry about that. So mm. I, I had an amazing woman at home. I didn't have to worry about that. So take chase and tail off the table. Mm. Now I can focus on the things that are going to help me succeed as a person and, mm. and better me as, as a man and as an individual. And so her just being in my life and being that rock that I didn't have to worry about. I never had to worry about her running around or cheating on me. Mm. I like, I trusted her mm. and, um, and she was my partner. And so that was, um, I mean, she is, she is, I mean, I would not be where I am today if I had not met her. I mean, this is just, you know, no, just that, a fact. And so, um, one of the interesting things is, you know, a lot of people I've never shown her on my YouTube channel, right? Mm -hmm. I've had her on a few videos, just like voice. Yeah. Um, because I do feel like, you know, it, I think it's important for men to hear people who have a good relationship interact and talk to each other, <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah, 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 yeah. and, um, and see that, you know, what a healthy relationship possibly looks like, because yeah. I think a lot of people are in very toxic, yeah. bad relationships yeah, and, yeah. and they're in it for whatever reason, they're comfortable. It's hard to break up with somebody. You don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. Mm. I mean, I've been in relationships before where, you know, I, I, you know, I knew that it was the wrong relationship. I knew I wasn't going to end up with this person, yeah. but I stayed. Why did I stay? Mm. That's the question I think you've got to ask yourself if you're a man and you, you know, mm. like, you know, <laughs> if this person is somebody that you're going to kick it with long term yeah. and you know, if it's somebody that, that is not. Yeah. And if it's not, why are, why are you wasting time? You're wasting her time. You're wasting your time. It's time to do the hard thing, pull the bandaid off and say, you know what? I gotta, I gotta do what's right for me. Mm. And, um, because you're never going to find that person that is your rock, that is amazing. And that is your counterpart until you're willing to do the hard work. And the hard work a lot of times is, is acknowledging that this is a, a toxic or not even toxic, just, it's not the right person. Mm. And so, so I don't think I answered your question. No, I, but I like where you're going because so basically there was a recent video that came out on my channel and a lot of guys were like, are, were like really like watching it and sharing it. I've been getting a ton of DMs and in the video, I, I was talking to these women and I communicated to them. I was like, yo, you're extremely attractive and that's, and men will find that valuable because men just like beautiful women. But when it comes to your personality and being a liability and you being a headache and your attitude, that's going to prevent them from staying. Well, that's it. The other thing I'll say is pretty is, it, you know, pretty doesn't doesn't do it, you know, yeah. in terms of, you know, pretty as a diamond dozen go on Instagram. Like yeah. there are lots of pretty girls. Yeah. But do they have integrity? Do they have a good character? Are they a hard worker? Mm hmm. Are they good financially? Mm -hmm. I mean, all these little things. Like I've dated women that have been absolute financial disasters. You know, mm -hmm. if she's bad with her money, she's gonna be bad with your money. And I'm not <laughs> right. saying that that you know it's all about the money, but but these are things that are are you know important to me. Yeah. And um, you know, this 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 the social media. Once again, I would never date a female influencer. Mm. Never. And the reason is because I will never. You will never be good enough. She's always seeking that that. I'm I'm generalizing, but Speak in terms truth. of you know, always seeking that validation and that attention. At first, when you start dating, you're enough, but eventually mm. it's going to get, it's going to get, you know, average and normal. And, and, and I, I just, I would never date an influencer personally. Yeah. No, that's Not so, me. that's so good because similar to what you said, I, 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 I'm, tr I try to let these guys know because like you said, you have to deal with the person and not just the parts. So you're online, you see, oh, the beautiful face, the beautiful body, these parts, but what is a person like? And so a lot of guys, because we live in such a social media era and all you're seeing is their highlights and their pictures and maybe funny TikTok videos of them, you know, doing whatever crazy dances that's going on nowadays. And so many guys, especially young guys, are infatuated about that. And But you're not seeing that if you want to be a man like Aaron and have a family and be able to have someone there for the long run without the character component, that beauty is useless. You know, to me, it's like having an amazing car. Beauty's a depreciating asset. <laughs> yeah, you know? <laughs> it, to me, it's like, it's, like, it's like having an amazing car with an amazing body and everything is, is a brand new model, but there's no engine. 
There's no transmission. Literally, you know, the, the tires are all flat. Like it has no functional purpose in your life. And so you're right. I think one of the things I want more men to see is that you have to value other things because if you just simply make it about beauty and you meet somebody who doesn't, who has a bad air, a attitude or bad character, you will always, always never be happy and it will only make your life more and more miserable. 100% agree. Yeah. And so what are things that you feel like men should um, look for that you found in your wife that makes her an asset to your life and not a liability? So what are some uh, important tributes? Hard worker. I yeah. mean, I think that that's one of the things that really is the most attractive thing to my to like that I that I find attractive about my wife is that she's an incredibly hard worker. Um, she uh, she left home when she was 16 years old mm. and, um, you know, had a, you know, another not the greatest home life. And so she left. And so she's a survivor. Mm. And so I think that's one of the things that that once again, it's she never asked for a handout from anybody. She started working. She started, you know, she slept on somebody's couch and she you know, she owned her situation and didn't look for somebody else to solve her problem. She mm. solved her problem. Um, and she's incredibly, you know, compassionate and kind, and she is amazing with money. And, um, and she's, she's, she's my rock. Yeah. You know, she, she isn't an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. which is good because, <laughs> you know, it's not good to have two entrepreneurs yeah, in a family, yeah, but, yeah. but yeah, I mean, she, she is, she's just the sweetest thing in the world. Yeah. So, so what about, for the guys who are like, oh man, that sounds amazing. And, but they're, they're also a bit oblivious and new to women. What are some things that you would say to avoid? Like, what are some signs or things that, you know, you may notice that, okay, I've seen guys date or marry women like this and it's always been a train wreck. So what are some of the warning signs or warning flags? Yeah. That you if she doesn't want you ever hanging out with your friends, that's a sign. That's mm, a flag. Mm. If she freaks out and gets upset when you talk to somebody else non-romantically and just platonically, that's a sign. I had, I dated this girl who got jealous of everybody, including, you know, like my, my friends, like older women that I was just, you know, my, my business partner, um, Linda, who I opened that fitness center with, like she was, you know, 20 years older than me. Not like, you know, she was jealous of everybody, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. a super crazy jealous woman. That's something that you gotta be careful about. You yeah. need somebody that, that is secure in who they are and the value they bring to the table. Yeah. Um, and, and somebody who, who allows you to have your, you know, your own time. I mean, mm. we are not supposed to morph into one entity in terms of, you know, man, woman together. Mm. Okay. Only one. No, it's okay yeah. to have your own, your own life. Yeah. It doesn't mean that, you know, you don't love each other. It doesn't mean that, you know, you're out doing something you shouldn't be doing, but yeah. it's, it's healthy and it's important to have your own time, your own space, your own friends. Yeah. Um, and if somebody doesn't understand that, that's also not good. If she has a really bad relationship with her parents, I think that's also another flag mm. that you need to just be aware of. Yeah. Um, because you know, you, that's, yeah. it, it, it's, you've just got to be, be aware of that. No, that's good. And, and something else that I noticed was that like similar to what you're saying, I think it's important that when men are in these toxic, unhealthy, not good situations it's important that they unplug. But I feel like some guys might have a mentality of like, you know, kind of this Superman, it's my job to save her and, you know, it's my job to help her and it's my job to, you know, you know, like, you know, build her up. And so when they're in these toxic situations, they think it's normal and they think it's okay to stay there. So, so it, if a guy's in that situation where it's just constant disrespect and constant, sometimes even emotional or physical abuse, you know, and, but he thinks, oh, as a man, you got to be strong and you got to, you got to be there. What, what would be your advice to a guy in that kind of situation? <laughs> that, that you're, you're insane. Mm. You know, it, it's, um, you know, uh, People are funny and, um, you know, you got to look at yourself. If you're in that situation and, and you're in a, this as unhealthy, abusive relationship, what's going on with you? Why are you feeling the need to take care of this person? Why are you accepting the abuse, the emotional, physical, or whatever abuse you're enduring? You know, what's going on with you? And I think it's probably something where you need to deal with some issues that you've got deep seated. And, um, and once you do and, and start loving yourself a little bit more, mm -hmm. you won't, you won't you won't find value in that person the way that you did when you were when you were not in a place of 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 self-love. Mm, no, that's great because I think for me 
going back to your your point about therapy, I think when when a man has done the emotional work, which, which is why we're constantly emphasizing the emotional and spiritual work, when a man has done that, t- the example I always give is my dad is an extremely clean person. He, he's a clean freak to an extent. And if my car is dirty and I tell my dad, hey, come in this dirty car, my dad won't go inside. He will not, he will say, unless you clean this up, I can't be in here because somebody who is a really clean person cannot stand to be in filth. So in a very similar manner, I tell men all the time, if you've done the emotional work, if you've dealt with the demons and the issues and the hurt and all the trauma, what ends up happening is you become so healthy that it is impossible for you to allow anybody unhealthy into your life because you will, it, it, will, it will be just so unattractive. It will be so like, wow, I can't have it here. And like, okay, well, if you want to do the work and come back later, that's okay. But for me to allow that into my life when I'm so healthy, myself it's so incongruent and it's an impossibility and that's what i've done and that's where i'm grateful to the work i've done and you know you've done the work because you meet women like that and you'll be like it's impossible yeah also substance abuse Mm. i mean you've got to just you know be be aware you know is is there something going on because if you are in a relationship with somebody that does have some type of of you know issue with maybe alcohol or drugs or or even you know other things like spending too much or mm. they're not good at, at, at budgeting and they live above their means. You know, these are all things that, that you're going to be, it doesn't get better <laughs> yeah, with time. Yeah. Things yeah. get worse typically. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so just be aware that, um, you know, uh, you need to not brush things under the rug. If there are red flags, you gotta, you gotta be smart enough to read the writing on the wall and, and just realize that there's, there's an issue. Yeah, no, th- that's true. And, I, and like I said, guys, man, listen to, you know, what Aaron told you, because I, th- I think the saddest thing to me is I, I get so many, you probably, your DMs are probably crazy out of control, but I get so many guys over and over again who send me these messages um, and, and they think it's normal. You know, and that's why, like I said, really emphasizing the emotional health component and and allowing guys to realize that it's not normal, you know, and and to be able to be in these toxic situations is not respectful to yourself. And I think you alluded to it before, like you have to value yourself. And I think the sad reality is that so many men don't value themselves because whether it was society, whether it was their parents, whether it was somebody in this some message it caused them to think, oh, I'm not good. You know, men ain't shit. You know, all these unhealthy ideas. So they've internalized it. And when you feel like you're valueless, you allow other people to treat you like that. And so I think your message is so powerful because guys need to value and respect themselves. And if you do so, you won't allow other people to disrespect you and treat you unhealthy. I agree. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So, and, and the last thing I want to talk to you about is is legacy man because one of the things i tell people all the time is that men men such as yourself you're always going after it you're always you're always wanting more you never get complacent you're always building 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 because you guys have a a desire to leave this legacy right you have this desire to really leave an impact and though you've left an amazing um dent on this planet you even want to go even further. And so what are some of the things that keep you going, keep you dr- driven, you know, keep you up at night to want to do more and want to continue to become the best version of yourself? You know, for me, it's the fear of, of it all going away. Mm. You know, every day I get up and I say the same thing to myself and I apologize for cursing. Mm. I get up and I say, I say, don't fuck it up today. <laughs> yeah. And really it's, it's, it's just a, a testament to how incredibly fortunate I feel that I am where I am and that I'm as fulfilled and happy as I am. Mm -hmm. Uh, It doesn't mean I don't have bad days. It doesn't mean that, you know, it's, it's not hard. And, um, but the fact that, that I am ultra aware that it could all go away tomorrow. Mm. And I really feel like you are, we all are like one or two bad decisions from being broke and homeless. And, um, and so seeing where I was and knowing how low I was and, And the fact that I'm as happy and healthy and emotionally just stable and fulfilled professionally, personally, you know, it's uh, it's something that that is what really motivates me to continue to just strive and work. Um, I also know that, you know, who knows when this will all go away? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, this literally could could go away yeah. tomorrow, you know. Yeah. Uh, worst case scenario, you know, COVID, you know, nobody yeah, saw yeah, that yeah, coming, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Worst case scenario. And yeah. so for me, it, it's just about 
keep working, keep stay hungry and, um, and, and just try to do the best job you can and, and make a difference where you can. And, and, um, and keep like pulling the thread of curiosity on that sweater. And yeah. so for me, you know, there's always things that I want to do. I want to try. Yeah. And that's one of my problems is there's so many things <laughs> I need to, I yeah, need to pull hey, back yeah, because, yeah. because there are only so many hours in the day, but yeah, yeah just keep, keep going. No, that's so good because man, going back to the video that is kind of, you know, blowing up because I was talking to a young lady and she, you know, described, you know, that she, Lord forgive her. She was like on OnlyFans for a year and she said, I'm very successful. And I'm like, well, the guys I know who, who are men and women who are very successful, they don't look at the scoreboard after the first minute of the first quarter and think that they're the victor. You know, these people have a long term mindset. And at any point of the game, they think, oh, this can all be over. And so listen, listening to you reminds me of the mindset of so many successful guys. And it's never getting comfortable. Like you like for for Aaron to talk about losing it all tomorrow, God, he ain't losing nothing tomorrow. Like he's doing <laughs> fantastic. Aaron made two, it would be two bad decisions, maybe three. Listen, a hundred bad decisions, <laughs> no. and maybe. But but and, and to see a man like you feel like I I genuinely believe that you feel like you are one or two bad decisions away from losing everything. And that's the reason I stopped drinking. Yeah. And and I'll tell you this story real quick. I Go mean, ahead. I used to have a uh, an unhealthy relationship with alcohol. Mm. Um up until probably it was probably about like 8 9 years ago, I was drinking too much. And the reason I did it it was a it was a it was a coping mechanism that I was, you know, self-medicating. I was drinking because I was unhappy with certain aspects of my life. And um and I decided, you know, I, I decided, you know what, I actually, the reason I quit drinking was because I wanted to quit chewing tobacco. I mm -hmm. was crazy addicted to nicotine and I didn't want to be, I didn't want to die from tobacco. And so I, I decided, okay, if I have to quit this, I need to stop drinking. I didn't realize that, um, that drinking was going to not drinking was going to change my life. Now to this day, I, I will have, you know, a glass of wine or two mm -hmm, yeah. one, once in a while, once a week, you know, with my wife at dinner, but you know, the reason why I don't drink and I don't go out and get drunk, because if I'm not in that situation, I know myself. I know that if, you know, back when I was doing these unhealthy things, I would make really bad decisions and I don't want to be that person that makes those bad decisions anymore. So if I, if I can eliminate or limit one of the potential triggers or reasons that, that you, a lot of my bad decisions were made, then, then I'm going to be in a better, better position. But yeah, alcohol, giving up alcohol and getting drunk and abusing that was, uh, and blacking out and all that was one of the best decisions that I ever made. Mm. And so I highly recommend it to anybody who's, who's currently doing that. Mm. Um, because everything in your, your life will get better. You'll have better relationships. You'll be more successful. You'll feel better. You'll look better. Everything will get better. Yeah, man. No, bro. What what I love the most about you, many things, <laughs> but what I love from from talking to you is just your the self awareness, man. Like for you to be so self aware about struggles, so self aware about your emotions, so self aware. I really believe that's what that's like the man manhood journey, right? Is the man discovering himself and that self awareness also to know your limits to be like, hey, man, you like this alcohol or, you know, this tobacco, whatever it is, could lead me to hurt and lead me to harm. I just think that self-awareness com component, it's so powerful. And, but, and, and that's something I think, unfortunately, a lot of guys just don't know who they are, you know? And so that self-awareness just, just doesn't come easy to them. You know, one of the things that I see, you know, all these with social media and the ability to make money. So, so I tell people that, that, Social media, and once you figure out a way to make money on social media, whether or not it's, you know, Instagram, you start a business, you sell a course, you do whatever, you know, that will warp and change your perception of a dollar. The other thing is that a lot of these guys are, are finding success young. Mm. And if I were, if I was, okay, so let me say, if I was Jose Zaniga, yeah. you know, super young, handsome, successful at a young age, yeah. I'd be dead. Mm. I would not be able to handle that. Mm. I know me. One of the things that I'm incredibly fortunate for is the fact that I didn't find any type of success mm. until, you know, like middle thirties, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, creeping yeah. up on 40. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. so I've, I've, I've gone through it. I've had a life before, you know, the, the sort of, you know, the success, honestly. And yeah. so I've had, you know, struggles and, and 
the fact that I am a little bit older than a lot of these people on social media is actually a benefit for me personally. 100%. No, and, and I tell guys that all the time, like so many guys want it all today, but if you got it today, you blow it all today. And the most powerful people, the most successful people, obviously there's goats like Jose who are just able to manage it really well, but they get the success later because when you get it later on, you become responsible, right? I've always said, I think, I think the worst thing to do is to be a teen star. Like to be a teenage star yeah, and man. get all that fame and attention today. 100%, oh you are doomed because it's downhill from there because <laughs> yeah, it exactly. doesn't last forever. Exactly. And then, you know, and, and that's one of the, <laughs> it's funny. I always used to think the same thing when I had a uh, personal training clients and these, these parents would buy their 16 year old, a really nice car, yeah. like a BMW or something really nice. I thought to myself, the nicest car they're ever going to be able to have is the one that their parents gave them when they were 16 oh years old, gosh. because you know, it, it's, you're setting yourself up for your, for, for disappointment. Mm. And so, yeah, I mean, along those lines, I mean, I agree a hundred percent teen stars and a lot of these people online that are so young doing really, really well, yeah. sort of back to your only fans, girl, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, you just, it's, 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 it's interesting. You know, fame is, 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 yeah, because because of what 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 I've learned, and this is the this is the beauty of age, is that when you're when you're young, you don't know what 20, 30 years of life is like. You really don't. I tell people all the time, like if you think about how old do you feel like you were when you really started being conscious and understanding life, like how old do you think you were? 38. 38. Cool. So you're at 44 right now? Maybe 40. <laughs> <laughs> 43. Yeah. I'm still figuring it yeah. out. Yeah. So, so to me, it's like you have six, eight years of actually understanding reality and the 30 something years with just a fog of just figuring it out. But there's so many people who are 20 years old, 18 years old, who think they know it all. And I'm like, well, then you, <laughs> I did when I was 20. Yeah. I thought I knew it all, yeah. but, but, uh, but yeah, no, it's, uh, <laughs> how old are you? Uh, 30. Okay. Yeah. So you see, you're still, a I'm, baby. A kid. I'm a kid. I, that's what you I don't know I'm anything. A, I don't know nothing. Like, you are wet. Whoa. Well, like, like that you are so far ahead of, of any, you know, any, anybody I know in terms of just, just conceptualizing and grasping sort of this, the magnitude of, of what we're facing and, and, but do you know going, why? Cause I sit down next to smart men like you who are older than me. Cause, cause that's honestly what I tell guys all the time. People are like, oh, I feast, you're so smart. I'm not a prophet. I'm a parrot. I'm just not some intelligent <laughs> individual who just knows all these great things. I listen to smart guys such as you and I learn from your lives and I apply it to mine and I articulate it to everybody else. So that's why it's so important that every man watching this video should be subscribed to your channel because every man needs an older guide to lead them in life because you just don't know anything. And we don't have a lot of, a lot of men don't have good male role models. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just the fact. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think we've gotten so selfish. Yes. And, um, you know, everybody thinks that they've got to, you know, that they really, we've gotten selfish mm -hmm. and, you know, I think that um, there aren't enough men teaching men how to be men and how to be self-reliant and self-sufficient and um, just how to how to talk to people, how to treat people, how to how to treat themselves. And so mm. this is something that is an epidemic. Yes, 100 percent, 100 percent. So in closing, if there was a if there's a 25 year old guy. He's sitting on his mother's couch. He doesn't have a job. He's out of shape. He he doesn't have a lot of motivation. And he's hearing this uh, episode. He's he's hearing you for the first time. Your words are really resonating in his heart. What is a closing message you like to give a man like that? What I would say is is the sooner you realize how powerful you are and the fact that you can accomplish whatever you want, but it takes you taking that first step. And honestly, the first step is the hardest. Right? Mm. Go to the gym. Start exercising. Um, you know, and, and step outside of your comfort zone. I mean, that's the kind of the thing, like we get so comfortable and it's hard, right? It's hard to change. It's hard to do things that are a little bit outside of the box. You know, you just do not want to be looking back at your life five years from now and be in the same place. Mm -hmm. That should scare the crap out of you. Yes. You've got to realize that if you want anything to happen, you've got to make it happen. Nobody's going to hand, nobody's going to knock on your door and deliver you an opportunity <laughs> like a pizza. You've got to realize that you've got to go out and grab it, mm. grab it. And, um, and the sooner you do, the sooner you realize that nobody's going to hand you anything. Yeah. If you want anything in life, you've got to go out and make it happen. You know, it, it, 
that's that's the point at which your life will change. But yeah, go to the gym, start working out, do some push ups. You don't even need to go to the gym. <laughs> yeah. Just start doing push ups and go for a jog around the block and you'll be you'll be on your way and, and pointed in the right right direction. No, oh, man, and I appreciate that, guys. Hopefully you take that to heart and you apply it, man. I, I really learned a lot from today's episode, man. I appreciate you taking the time out of the day to not only educate me, but also to help a lot of these young men, man. I I'm really grateful for your life, brother. Thank you so much for no what problem, you're doing, no brother. Problem, I appreciate you're so, making a difference. So where can they find you at alpha m uh youtube channel alpha m uh alpha m.com pretty much you go there you'll get more than you need of me <laughs> I, love <laughs> it, I love it i love it guy so guys go ahead and you know um you know how we get down the roommates go send aaron a message go on his instagram which instagram account uh aaron marino aaron marino send him a dm on instagram let him know how much this episode impacted your life guys continue to not just receive amazing messages from men like aaron marino. apply it everyday life. My name is Hafiz and I'm joined by Aaron Marino. We are the roommates and have a great day.